I'm actually genuinely getting kind of furious. Aren't you? And if not, can I ask, why not? I can't bear this Tory government. I'm sorry, I can't. They do whatever they please. They have no regard for decency, for the law, just for basic standards of acceptable behaviour. I mean, are you okay with it? The phrase, one rule for them and another for us, has just never rung as true or as loudly as it's ringing right now. Do you know what's really upsetting? In the past, individuals in politics would mess up and they'd, they'd bring some shame to their party, okay? Now, the whole of the Tory party are messing up continuously and bringing shame to us as a country, as a nation. Honestly, the rest of the world is looking at us going, what the hell is going on? And do you know who I blame? Yeah, I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna put it at his door. Forget Cameron and the referendum and all that. Johnson. Boris Johnson. When he got into power, standards just plummeted because he set the tone. I mean, he was never fit for office in the first place. He wasn't. And now the whole party's record is tainted by him. It's sort of steeped in rot, stained by all his foul lies and ultimately his failure. And yet, no, doesn't seem to be any consequences. He's still just naffing about making speeches and getting paid loads for it. And that pisses me off. In the past, when politicians messed up or did something wrong or got found out, you know, things happened. They would resign or they would get, you know, pushed out of the party, but not anymore. Honestly, they can say anything they want. I'm gonna bring it back, the big old lie on the bus, and we should, we shouldn't forget it. We shouldn't just go, oh, that's old news. 350 million pounds a week to the NHS. And then you look at what's happening to the NHS, like that's just not acceptable. Didn't they promise to build 40 new hospitals as well? Pretty sure they did, and pretty sure they haven't. It is true, mistakes have always been made across the political spectrum. I'm not saying that they haven't, but what I'm saying is that in the past, people were held to account. And what I really struggle with is the fact that people have just gone numb. They've become desensitized to all of this crap. So in the past, people would be very, very shocked whenever a scandal was broken, but now there's just so many of them we can't keep up. It's awful. I mean, let's just have a look at a little snapshot of some of the things that have been going on in plain sight and that people aren't out on the streets writing about. We learned that ex-Chancellor of the Exchequer, Nadeem Zahawi, has had to pay back millions in tax. Do you know what's unbelievable? In 2015, hypocrite Zahawi wrote, Labour didn't deal with tax avoidance for 13 years in government. We have introduced new tax avoidance laws just this month. Oh really, have you? Have you really? Was that before or after you claimed the electricity for your stables on expenses and forgot to pay millions to the Treasury? Not only that, this week, and this is totally hideous, we witnessed tyrannical Home Secretary Suella Braverman displaying zero levels of empathy to a Holocaust survivor. And you heard that correctly, and that makes me feel sick. So Suella, who actually gives Pretty Patel a run for her money in the authoritarian stakes, totally disregarded Joan Salter and what she was saying. And Joan is a Holocaust survivor. And Joan questioned, quite rightly, Braverman's really vile, deliberate use of language when referring to refugees, which, having fled Nazi Germany as a child, she's understandably, like, totally repelled by. What did Suella Braverman do? Did she pause? Did she have a little think? Did she reflect? No, she didn't. She doubled down and she defended her dehumanising, othering language, which has fueled so much ignorant rhetoric around the subject of migrants and refugees and people like me and people like you have had to sit back and watch this happen and it's disgusting. Another MP, the totally moronic and absurd Andrew Bridgen, has been suspended this week for lobbying, so that's nice. But also, he had to delete a tweet which compared the COVID vaccination programme to the Holocaust. Yeah, maybe just stay clear of the Holocaust subject altogether. MPs, how's that? Maybe just do that. Maybe show a little bit of respect for the millions of people who were systematically murdered. <sighs> it's all quite exhausting, isn't it? What else? Oh yeah, Health Secretary Steve Barclay. This is bad. Okay. He told burnt out, demoralised, exhausted and totally underpaid health workers that they need to be more, but 
productive. Yeah. Worth noting, Steve had just returned from a three-week holiday to deliver this beauty. Oh, and then there's just your common or garden corruption with the VIP PPE lane saga. There was the small matter of putting the son of a former KGB agent in the House of Lords. I could go on. I do not get it if you are not livid. Even if you agree with the politics of these people, OK, if you're a dyed-in-the-wool Tory due to having old-school conservative values, how, how can you respect this lot or condone their awful behaviours? I mean, they're just not within the boundaries of what's OK. And it isn't good enough. And we do deserve better. MPs are people that we should aspire to and respect. They are the people who get paid to supposedly protect and fight for our best interests, but then seem to spend most of their time feathering their own nests. This current incarnation of the Tory party, I'm sorry, since 2019, this particular lot have done more to damage our faith and democracy than any lot who've gone before. We have less of a cabinet and more of a cabal. If they're not poncing about on reality shows, Matt Hancock talking about you, or making bloody speeches, or bringing out books that we could all live without, while simultaneously, oh, just breaking ministerial code again by spending naff all time in his constituency, Johnson. The venal greed and corruption stinks. And, and it all happens under this umbrella of absolute chronic ineptitude. They fail upwards, people, and they get rewarded for it. The corruption, the scandal, the not paying of tax, that should all be a great cause of alarm, frankly. It should be shocking, and you should be bewildered, like I am, as to how they all get away with it. Because it is, and I'm going to say it again, it's one rule for them, and it's another for us.